Okay, so um, if I can just set the scene first. Um, out of Home is going through a great renaissance, uh, along with TV and online. Out of Home is one of three media channels uh, that is growing because of greater investment in estate, uh, better audience research data, and of course, digital screens themselves that offer such high quality uh, display and buying flexibility. So connecting everything everywhere is the subject matter of, of our debate. The opportunity to, to connect outdoor ads with mobile to enable real-time interaction presents exciting opportunities for advertisers and the out-of-home media. However, as we all know, uh, this evolution is still very much in its early stages uh, and not without difficulties. Aside from the technical obstacles of combining digital out-of-home screens with dynamic feeds and mobile location data, there are real challenges in gathering and using data. But are we sure it's what consumers and brands want from their out of home? Do consumers want to be targeted like this? In other media, ad blocking is an unfortunate consequence of tech. Perhaps we need to be careful that we don't fall into the same trap. So uh, to debate the topic, uh, we have some of the leading experts in the field of mobile. We have uh, Susan Wenger from Deutsche Telekom, uh, from the vendor side. Uh, we have uh, Stroy's, Stroy Group's Christian von den Brinken uh, from Out of Home Solutions. Uh, we have Kai Marcus Tasler from Postoscope. And to offer some key client insight, uh, we have Patrick Swinesteck, uh, who is Maggie's head of digital, who can help us understand their understanding of the opportunities uh, presented by Out of Home and Mobile. So, um, Susan, if I can uh, turn to you first. Um, you're responsible for smart data analytics and communications at Telecom Labs. Um, when, when mobile data is used, a major concern is consumer privacy. How, how, have you, how do we meet the challenge of, of uh, protecting consumer privacy? What requirements do we need to meet? So, so what you need to do, and it depends really what kind of data you use, so you have two possibilities what you can do. You can either say that the user uh, has an opt-in for the data, then you can use the personalized data, or you use an anonymization approach, um, and then you can use the data anonymized for different kind of opportunities. And for the anonymization, you really have to be um, deep into technical crypto things that is very safe. And if you want to combine it with other, other data, you have to be very careful. For our application, we have a special approach that we use only in our data centers to anonymize data. And even the anonymized data stay in our data centers at Deutsche Telekom. Okay. Um, I mean, ha have, you, have you had an experience of how consumers react to such direct targeting? Yeah. <laughs> so, so what we did, so it's very nice because in my team I have a lot of technical experts. So my team, it's, it's, it's working on data analytics. So I have computer science technical people. And then I have people who look at the customer insights. And I'm combining these groups together. And my customer insight team, um, I asked to ask especially our consumers. So we have a panel in Berlin with 1,000 users. And what we normally do, if we have ideas in our lab, we ask the customers. We can invite them. We can print things. We can ask them online. And we ask questions and use cases about the outer net there. And what we found out, and that was very interesting for us, is that the user want to have use cases where they have a benefit. So for example, use cases like uh, emergency cases, uh, like uh, for me, it's, it's always Duisburg, where you can say, OK, if you know where, where you have trouble, where a lot of people, and these are use cases where, the, where within our panel, the customer said, that's OK. And the other surprising thing was that they say it is okay if you have a business model behind it. We don't believe you if everything is for free, but we need our benefit. The another case is, for example, like um, trains or buses. If, you, if the bus is full, you want to know it in real time, stuff like that. 
Okay. But the personalized advertisement in the outer net, that was not such <laughs> good because there were the, was a lot of fear from the users there that they see their personalized um, advertisement right. in, in, in the public. So some work to do, and I think it's maybe people getting used to yes. you know, being targeted in this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so look, Christian, if I, could, if I can move on to you as the, uh, as the vendor. Um, you have a public net video network that reaches 30 million uh, people in Germany per month through train stations and shopping centers. Uh, and I think you're the first vendor also to offer uh, programmatic campaign management. So I I've got to ask you, you know, 30 million people a month, what's, what's the experience? How's it, how's it, how's it been? How, the, how are they interacting with screens? The main thing is it's a it's a huge audience. I mean, normally yeah. uh, in online, yes, yeah, a challenge that if you want to scale audience, it takes rather long time. And the classical ability of out of home is to very quickly emerge into audiences because there are many people who do their way every day. So you reach reach very quick, and that's a big effect where classical out of home opportunities are actually hitting online opportunities of data-driven performance, flexibility, and granularity. So merging these two worlds is quite interesting for us. Okay. So, look, I mean, I, 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 I work for an outdoor planning agency in London, and, I mean, I think, you know, you and I probably have quite a lot in common. So, um, we're, we're coming from a world where uh, out-of-home is planned, generally speaking, by, you know, packages, packages of sites. Now, you know, we have the opportunity to use data to optimize audiences more and to perhaps serve Absolutely. ads programmatically almost in real time through an automated planning buying system. Do, 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 you, do you think, is, is out of home ready for this? And are, are you ready for it? <laughs> you? Well, uh, <laughs> it has to be. It has to be because uh, agencies and clients are actually demanding because they want to integrate what you can do, the audience you can deliver on their own DSPs and their own systems. So if you don't integrate, then it becomes very difficult to quickly sell the audience. I mean, the whole world, the industry is actually working, has changed from a planning way where you had one year in advance all the plans into a very agile way to do media. And as a vendor, you have to cope with that. If you have like eight weeks of delivery time for your audience, it's simply too long. So this is why you need the systems. And, and you're absolutely right, the process is changing because yeah. you're integrating data and, and... Okay. Oh, okay. So let me just finish one sentence. So you're integrating <laughs> data uh, and, and intelligence in, into the way you book out of home and you don't do it the old fashioned way anymore. Right, okay. I mean, that's interesting because yeah, that's interesting. Uh, it's just that yeah. it would seem to, you know, sort of perhaps concur with, uh, you know, with what you're saying. Um, I, I, I have a, um, uh, you know, just sort of, you know, an idea that um, I think, you know, we're, we're used to, some of the vendors are used to clients knowing exactly pretty much what they're going to spend throughout the year and perhaps you know, with uh, precision targeting could actually result in some clients spending less because, uh, you know, you have this, this, op uh, this, you know, this opportunity to be a bit more specific uh, in targeting. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm going to save that one for, <laughs> for Patrick was, as well. There was, always, there was exactly. always a risk in digitalization. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. And uh, I just want one final question. I mean, what... what, what what is it you think that consumers so far are taking uh, from, from, you know, from, from the content? I mean, do, do, you, do you get that much feeling that, um, that you know, they're reacting in a certain way? Do they like certain things and not like others? Well, I mean, we're, we're still a broadcaster, right? So, so yeah. we're not, with this channel, you're always broadcasting one too many. So what we find out is although the consumer has his own mobile and all the other screens, that content still plays a role in the acceptance of the channel. So when we change content, we get feedback from the, cons from the consumers. So obviously it builds a context that is somehow relevant in the outer life the consumer has every yeah. day. Okay, good. So no that's negative that's feedback yet. <laughs> no complaints. No complaints so far. 
Good. Um, Kai, if I, if I can turn to you. So you, you have the unenviable task of having to collate data yeah. um, uh, to, uh, you know, to work, obviously, with clients in terms of developing what they want uh, and then translating yeah. that into a media buy. So, I mean, what, what have been the practical challenges of integrating dynamic data feeds and, and mobile? To you know, to, to to your plans. Yeah, I think there are two major two major um, challenges. First one, we just launched a product called the XMapper, which combines geodata, um, geofences, and mobile data in a very standardized way, which is still tailor-made. That means what we do is we look at Germany, we look at the media that we have out there, we look at the uh, the, the the mobile data, and according to the needs of the clients, we're combining them and trying to um, mark up every single um, site, saying this is good for the, for, the, for the communication purpose of a client or not. So that's um, not really standardized. It's tailor-made because it depends very much on the communication needs of the clients. Okay. But that's the one way. The other way is use mobile data to understand the behavior, the mobile behavior um, out there. That means adding qualities, um, behaviors to different touch points. For example, if you're using Facebook um, at a certain touch point, if you're using um, certain mobile apps if you have about soccer, for example, it's a different situation, different behavior, different mindset. And that's what we're combining with, our, with the usual um, user data, with our geodata, to understand which are the best touch points, which are the best media to be selected for the best communication purpose. So I think the outnet, from my point of view, is something that adds um, content to out of phone media. And I think that's very smart. Okay. Um, I mean, how, how, much, how, much, how much do we really know about how, how far consumers are willing to go to actually participate? So, you know, from, I mean, you know, I, I, I think you know what you've said is is that you know you can you can add a lot of science to you know the planning, but ultimately it is down to the consumer to you know to to, to make an action. Absolutely, as Susan already said, yeah, the opt-in or the, the the behavior of the of the user understanding which kind of data he offers is very important. Um, from my point of view, um, if you have certain patterns of movement of behavior, you don't really go very close to the single user. It's always anonymized. So you always have data which show how target groups are moving. Out of phone, from my point of view, is still a mass media. So you won't target you yeah, or me. It's not individualized. So it's, it's not yes. individualized. So I think for the, for, for, for the users themselves, it's more like the media is optimized for them. They get yeah. broadcast impulses that are relevant for them because it's right time, right place, right message for them. And that's why it's getting more and more convenient for them to see what they can use for, for action, for example, okay. as a feedback channel for mobile. Okay. So I think it's, it's, it's actually a benefit for them. Good well, question. Actually, the, the, uh, the interesting thing is if you work with geographical data, like, like you go into tiles and kind of stuff, you don't have the data security problem that you do have when you use personalized data. So what you are doing, what we are doing is we've built a geographical DMP yeah. that works in geographical tiles and tells us what is happening in this tile at a certain moment. And then the broadcast media we all can access can be used to, to broadcast in this tile. So even in Germany, not that kind of data security problem you would have as if you would use personalized data where you need permissions and all kinds okay. of things. So it's always tile, touch point, and target. Yeah, sure. Okay. I, I, I just want to move on to Patrick because I'm just sort of conscious of time, and you know, arguably Patrick's opinion is probably the most important. <laughs> yes, yeah. he has some money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, Patrick, um, um, uh, as, as, as a client, I, I know that you haven't run any, you know, sort of large digital out of home campaigns yet, but I know that you use classic out of home to drive traffic and interaction online and you use uh, consumer mobile to drive consumers in store as well. Yep. So, you know, what I'd like to ask you is, what is it that out of home mobile must do to, to become standard on, an out of, uh, on, a, on a media plan? That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it always depends on the given goals of each campaign. 
Um, but in general, I think there is a huge potential for autofoam, digital autofoam in special. Um, but to leverage this potential, I think there need to be some developments. Uh, at first, I think I would suggest to the vendors to make uh, your inventory available through programmatic buying um, because it would give uh, you the chance to be more attractive to, to um, advertisers' clients like, like Nestle or Maggi because we have large assortments. And having the chance to deliver the right message, as you said, Marcus, and <laughs> to the right person at the right timing um, is quite huge. Um, take next point, targeting. Um, quite difficult, but um, interesting. I don't need a targeting down to a segment of one, to an individual. Um, I need smart segments and maybe dynamic advertising possibilities. That means that I want to deliver my message in a time frame of half an hour where people are rushing by um, to deliver the right message. Take, take, take especially, <laughs> especially for Maggie. Yeah? Uh, Very good. Okay, then, then we talk about another point. Um, it's the distribution of the screens, the digital screens. Right? Yeah, that's special. Um, today, they are on hotspots, on public transportation, in malls. Yeah? Um, me, as a FMCG player, I need them in proximity to supermarkets. Um, do you tick? <laughs> Let's go to the municipalities and make the tick. Okay. Uh, because <laughs> we want, but they are the challenge. Yeah, exactly. We would love to tick, yeah. I agree. Um, I've, I've seen cases uh, from the UK at uh, Tesco. Yeah. There are some yeah. great, great things. And um, this is what we as big FMCG players are looking for, to drive people to the store to buy our products. And uh, last but not least, I think um, we've mentioned it before in the, in the briefing, uh, in the talk, uh, there have to be smart, creative concepts to drive response. Uh, yep. And I think it's um, on our side to do that together with the creative entities. But I would... Um, Engage you? Uh, not yet. Okay. I would engage you to, to help the creative yeah. agencies and the media agencies uh, to help us to deliver the right content. I mean, we have a lot of content, but um, the point is I'd like to deliver the content by a dynamic ad, by programmatic buying. Huh? Yeah. So that's my point of view on okay. that. Good. Well, um I mean, we, we were talking about it outside before we came in. That the, I think you know the one thing that you know has always frustrated me is is that you know, you will see an ad on Outdoor, which is just being created for, you know, for, you know, for something else, a different medium, whether it's press or, or, or whatever. So I, I think more than ever, and it's, maybe it's more of a statement than a debating topic, but I think, you know, the, uh, the marriage of media and creative in this new connected world that we're operating in is probably going to be as important as, as, uh, as data and, you know, all of the other things that we can, uh, that, that, uh, that we can bring. I think the most important thing is um, the, the, the chances that the ads are going to be relevant for the people to yeah. see them. So if you come close to their behavior, to their mindset, if you show, show something that attracts them, the ad is much more relevant than using just a TV spot and showing it out of home. It oh. doesn't make sense. But you find something, of course the data has to be profound, that, uh, are the creations. There has to be a connection because you understand the people who are moving in front of the screens. But if they're relevant, if the story is relevant, if the message is relevant, the key, the key elements are relevant for them, they of course buy the message. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. yeah I mean, the, the, the format is uh, quite a classical format we use, mm -hmm. right? It's portrait. You have it on your mobile. It's the same format yeah. than an iPhone yeah. or, or whatever. So, so I believe that, that the more mobile is emerging, which it certainly does, the better the creations also on digital or the phone screens will be. It's just a screen with a different size, but, but same format. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. It's still a very big challenge to have good creatives because as we all know, if you have a very good campaign, but a bad creation, it doesn't work at all. Oh, yeah. so, so it's a multiplier. If this one is zero, you're yeah. dead. Huh? I think I agree. Uh, we have to syndicate the right content to the right spot at the right time. Deliver the, I mean, it's pretty obvious. If I know that people are going at home or to the next door shopping, I can deliver the right message. Yeah. But it can vary from depending on the weather. Do I advertise my ice creams or do I advertise my uh, dishes, uh, meals? So you have the 
the other feats, but... Uh, and you do it already in online. I do. So yes. we're not yeah. talking about rocket <laughs> yeah. science, right? Yeah. We're just talking about merging it yeah. into, into the other exactly. network. But we need yeah. it on scale, so... Yeah. And actually, the good thing is, from media point of, uh, media agency's point of view, he can tell them cross media. The stories can be told cross media. He can tell it in television, online, mobile, and digital out of phone. So he's got four media as potential contacts. Mm -hmm. And if you have a repetition contact out of film, for example, it's much more than you've seen the Forrester story for the first time. So mm -hmm. he has to start from the beginning again. And if he's clever and briefs us like that, we can do media plan that integrates digital out of film like online and any other media. That's a small thing. I mean, there was, there was actually one factor which is also quite interesting. You shouldn't see digital out of home isolated as just a single channel. It's right. part of the overall yeah. attribution and journey. Mm -hmm. So the interesting pitch we are trying to head into as well is that you also have big inventories in online. Sure. And we're trying to, to cover big parts of the customer journey and our inventory and trying to, to attribute this journey so we can tell you pretty good how you move towards our different touch points until you finally purchase a product. And that's a big scalable ecosystem, which is quite unique and it's really fascinating to, to, to mm. build it right now. Okay. I mean, I, I think, I mean, you know, just sort of looking forward to the future, I think for, from, from where we sit anyway, that it seems that there are going to be two very important things. One is, you know, sort of having a um, better automation so that if we can create effective content management systems which allows agencies yeah. to, you know, to send content to you know, the various media owners and the various sizes and things like it's that. Called it's, it's, it's called yeah. Ad Server. It's called Ad Server. It's yeah. called Ad Server. Right. Yeah. Um, so I might ask you to talk about it in just a minute. But, 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 but also, I think, you know, how, how far are we away from having um, real-time ad buying? I mean, it, it see, I mean, I don't know what mentioned the word programmatic necessarily, but you know, it seems that it's for out of home, it's very much still in in, in, in its in its infancy. So, I mean, with, with that, Patrick, is that something? I suppose it's really for you too, probably. But yeah, I, uh, I mean, is this something which is 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 a necessity for out of home? Generally? Absolutely, absolutely. We're talking yeah. about, this, uh, but this is a lot. So, I think the three of us, sorry, the three of us are talking about this very much. <laughs> and the question, of course, of the business model is the. It's the, um, yeah. the opportunities, um, the technology. There's still some steps to go on the one hand side. On the other hand side, I think it, the next year we'll start to get one of the major columns of a business model in digital out of home and a planning model of the agencies. Because, for example, for the network I'm working for, the Dense Regis Network, um, our ad serving technology will be a holistic one where we play out digital out of home, online, exactly. uh, digital television, smart television. Because that's actually, at the end of the day, we're interested in target group. And we don't really care which media to use, that what Christian yeah. said. So the interesting thing is, if we get a target group out of home, and it's proper to get at the right time, the place, the right message, and the, and, and the right price, then we do it in real time. And I think for us, it's a very, very good purpose. Okay. So we can actually integrate in their DSP. Yeah. And from that on, they're accessing all the channels. Yeah. Uh, like mobile or yeah. phone, online, whatever, you have connected programmatically, yeah. and this is near real time. We have 20 seconds yeah. delay. Yeah. I, okay. mean, yeah. Yeah. I believe that is not a real challenge. The challenge, in my opinion, is always like getting the data mm -hmm. and handling the data yeah. like you're allowed to, to handle the data, yeah. putting everything together, and yeah. that's in real time. But you have to do it before. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, you may have mentioned this, but campaign verification. Um, I mean, will, will, you know, will that system, will, will, it, will, it, will, it, will, it, will it be able to confirm back to, you know, from the media owner back to the planning agency and then back to the client and then integration research as yeah. well? So it'll, it'll, it'll verify that campaigns are playing a out. Actually, we have to do this. Yeah. I think that's the next step. So the first step is one track and the back track will be, I don't know, something the reporting that still takes more time because digital out of film is more difficult than an online and, and mobile. So, but, but I think this is absolutely necessary. At the end of the day, if you have live campaigns combining several media at the same time, you have to have a back channel, you have to have yeah. reporting in real time. 
good. I need to make some money first. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I need one, one, one single point of context uh, because that's, I think, one of the major challenges is who am I talking to? Uh, or who will distribute my content for, based for my database content, uh, edge servers, management systems? Uh, and I think together we'll find a solution okay. and prove that it's effective and efficient. Yes, okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Good. So, Patrick, you're convinced anyway. Wait. You're, you're, you're convinced now. Well, I'm convinced <laughs> that we still have to go with some big major steps, yeah. but um, sure. as I said before, the potential is quite huge. And if all market players were together uh, developed it, then we're going big. Good. Actually, uh, the way the country is built with all those many cities is quite good for this kind of advertising because you really need broad audience, broad reach exactly. kind of stuff. So, so we're in a good country for this. Yeah. Good country for the alternate. Yeah, it seems, it seems like it. Yeah. Good, well I think, um, I, th I, think, I think we're done. So, have a look at things. So, thank you, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. Great. Thank you very much to our alternate panel. You're allowed to leave the stage because we've got new speakers coming up. Um, you've done great. Thanks for the input. Brilliant. So, uh, next up.